help our suppliers and customers, uh, help our suppliers produce products with lower emissions and provide lower carbon services to our customers. Then we want to empower our workforce. If these residual carbon footprint today is about 600,000 tonnes. As an individual, my direct carbon footprint is about six times an hour. We've got about 100,000 people in the company, so our employees' personal carbon footprints are about 600,000 tons of carbon, which is exactly what BG's direct footprint is. So how can we help our employees reduce their footprints? We do it through communication. We've had road shows around the business. We've had our R&D labs last week showing the Al Gore film, followed by uh, a debate. Um, and we're looking to see how we can then also encourage our employees to go out in the community as well as to spread the message. We also offer discounted carbon, low carbon products through our BP employees benefits page on the internet where people can get reduced cost products. And overall, we seem to be the number one choice in our industry as the low carbon suppliers. 2016 is the target, so this is not all tomorrow. It's a place to project a long-term strategy to deliver. This year we extended our green electricity contract out to 2010. As I said earlier, that provides green electricity across uh, our UK operations. We're now looking to see how in our international operations we can do the same, pure low carbon electricity. We're looking to see how we could further wind power generation, including on our own sites. Um, data centers are a rich ground for energy reduction, as I was saying earlier. Um, that initiative to get employees to identify uh, unused servers discovered 3,000 unused servers in our data centers. That's going to save 23 gigawatt hours of electricity, 3,300 tons of carbon dioxide, and the cost savings were around a million pounds or more. In terms of reducing our customers' carbon footprint, then the good news is the network. So if you, if you as a customer buy from BT, use our networks, it has a pretty low carbon footprint. At the moment, the bad news are consumer products. So not only the products themselves, but as you know, broadband is always on. So we're looking to see if we can make it always available rather than always on. So it has built in power down when it's not being used and help both ourselves and you reduce your carbon footprint. I think we have to tread carefully in this space. And there's a big flurry of activity going on now in terms of green claims going out to consumers and the Advertising Standards Authority um, is looking very carefully at this. So when we're making green claims, we just need to be to make sure that the robust backup information is there to um, back up the claims. And then using the technology to reduce last year GDP, people's use of video and audio conferencing saved 97,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide. 
850,000 face-to-face meetings and £238 million pounds of avoided costs, which split half between TNS participants and half uh, against lost productive time. So working with suppliers, there's all sorts of ways in which suppliers can help us and our customers reduce their carbon footprint. Clearly, by supplying us with low carbon footprint equipment that runs in our networks and data centers, we're working with our suppliers to make consumer products much more energy efficient and the hardware that we supply to business customers. Building this in at the design phase and upfront in product development and product service portfolio development is another big activity going on in the company. Looking at different materials, um, better logistics in the supply chain with RFID tagging, for example. All ways in which we with our suppliers can help reduce carbon footprint. So how? Three pledges that we made in our carbon strategy, which the board signed off at the very end of last year. First of all, that we will work with suppliers and run events with them, raise awareness amongst our supply chain. This is on and on from what we've done for many years, that's the easy bit. The second bit is that we've said that going forward, not only are we going to encourage our suppliers, but we are going to make it a mandatory criterion in all tender adjudication to consider energy consumption and environmental impact. So that's where suppliers really sit up and take notice Fine words and good encouragement is one thing, but when you say to them, this is a weighted adjudication criterion in a decision-making process that will determine whether you win the contract with BT or not, then that's when it becomes, that's when the rubber really hits the road. And then thirdly, we said that whenever we're renewing a contract, so for example, if we're renewing laptops coming into BT, then it will be a requirement of that renewal that the next contract will have, the, the items we're procuring will have a lower carbon footprint than the ones we were buying on the previous contract. So there are three supply chain pledges. Lots more about uh, BT and what we're doing in terms of our activities, the carbon calculator where check your own footprint if you're a small business, uh, office-based business, and uh, that's good for you as well. So a little bit of an overview for BT, thanks for your attention. Thanks. Any questions, I guess? Yeah. Thank you for one or two questions. Are there any questions for Chris? Hi, Faye McAnella from E.O. Um, I just wanted to ask you about your suppliers. How have you discussed your pledges with them? And if so, what responses have you got back from them? I'd say, um, so, so, so far this hasn't been communicated you know, right across the supply chain. So again, this is a long-term approach. It will take a while to get it into the systems of the business. Um, we started with uh, a number of the hardware suppliers. And you know, as part of this, part of delivery against that pledge is to, uh, for us, in order to understand the carbon footprint, we're asking them to supply that information to us. And some suppliers are failing even to be able to provide the information to us so that we can feed into the procurement decision making process. It's, uh, so there's a, a I think there's a, first of all, a mixed response in terms of their ability even to provide the information. I don't think it's any great surprise that this is happening to any supplier. Uh, I was with a professional services organization the other day, consultancy, 
and, uh, and they said, 